Ah, uh, welcome back. Welcome back. How are you guys doing? This is another episode of the Engine Breaking Podcast. We've made it to 17 episodes. We have not killed each other. We have not been canceled or deleted from the internet. So, welcome. My name is Blake, aka Break, uh, former F1 engineer, now full time, full of crap, talking about Formula One on the internet. And uh, here we have Dan, aka Engine Mode 11. How you doing? Yeah, and I'm also full of absolute shit. <laughs> <laughs> so well, why not combine forces and uh, make a shit nado of a podcast right so here we are so um this is what we do this is the, this is our first full season um we did a little bit of a season preview with testing we did a bahrain preview we're going to do bahrain review uh and then next week we'll get you guys with another episode maybe with a couple segments maybe find a guest for next week to do a little saudi preview but uh what, yeah what, we'll find We'll get a guest and they can do all the heavy lifting for us. Yeah, exactly. Say, so, hey, can you send us the script notes? Because uh, we're both complete trash. So, uh, but anyway, this is this is going to be an awesome season. How are we doing so far this season? Just to, to big up you guys out there gassing us up on the internet. Yeah. So, was it last episode where I said we broke our previous record of downloads? Yeah. Yeah. We, You've done it again. Oh, listeners. my God. You've done it again. We are, guys... We're on the up. Come on. I love to see that, man. And a uh, big toot toot for all of you guys. If you're driving home from work, driving to work, driving to your third job, or going mm -hmm. to pick the kids up, toot toot to yep. you. But um, seriously, or this is a lot of fun. And we listening probably... while you're on the toilet. Yeah, exactly. That's my favorite thing. That's when I, I just listen to your um, Tarkov streams when I'm on the toilet. If you stream yeah. Tarkov, I would have yeah. done that. He's like, oh, I'm dead again. But um, here's a shout out. Last week, uh, one of my cats or both of my cats dive bombed the stream and... um. Ryan XL Nerd twenty thirty two on Twitter got the memo. My cat's called Barry and Sterling. That's actually a reference to the animated series Archer, which is probably one of the best animated series on the internet. So, if you're um if you're listening to this podcast, do be sure to share it with your um your racist uncle on Facebook. Uh, but don't, uh, don't do that. But um definitely Facebook, Twitter, MySpace. Send it to your friends. And uh, if you're in the stream where we live record this over on Twitch TV front slash break. Don't hesitate to throw a screenshot up on your Instagram story and tell everybody how crap this podcast is and tell them they should definitely not come here. That usually works pretty well. So, uh, yeah, big up your local butcher. Yep. Tell them all about us. Yep, exactly. Phrasing, exactly. Um, what's in the episode today, Dan? What we got for everybody? Uh, the Bahrain race review. We'll, um, we're not going to give you a lap by lap account. I think, you know, there's other podcasts available that can do that. We're just going to they'll probably shit do a better talk. job as well yeah they'll probably do a better job we're just gonna shit talk our way through it um, <sighs> and then we have our uh first random fandom report cards are due in Ooh. more about that later okay and uh fraud watch and engine mocha boy awards oh my gosh and if you're not familiar with those those are some regular segments and they're they're a bit of a laugh but uh we'll, we'll tell you all about them why don't we get into a little uh bahrain race one of 2023 review Started with the build-up to the weekend and throughout practice. What we got? Well, look, listen. Again, confession time. Oh, okay. I am afraid that I did not watch any FP1 or FP2. Oh, my. So I might, have to, I, I might have to lean on you for this bit. That's okay. I, like, I, I, I was building the, uh, the data analysis database on the Buy Me A Coffee, where if you're a huge data nerd, you can check that out. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the YouTube, and um, you can check it out on my Twitter or something. But never mind about that. I was I had my finger on the pulse this weekend. Um, let's let's be honest. Let's a show of hands or toot toots in the car if you're driving to work. Who was mm -hmm. on the Aston Martin Alonso Dark Lord hype train following winter testing or even following his appointment to the Aston Martin team? What do you think? Were you on it? Me, hey, yeah. I was. I was. Yeah. I was choo chewing. Yeah, I was toot toot from winter testing. Like I saw that and I was like, my my data analysis and interpretation skills said they were not doing the opposite of alpine they were not sandbagging they were just playing what they got and that mm. thing was good um alonzo topping the sheets in fp2 not too shabby you know what it's free practice too don't worry free practice three throwaway session forget about it but dude i was so gutted to see williams and alpha Tauri like way way mm. in no man's land in p2 but it wasn't so bad in qualifying um when you say fp3 is a throwaway session some people might not get why that is a throwaway session well it's it's Would you it, like to tell our dear listeners why yeah why not but it's like 
it's like one of those things like the the lap times are super slow the track is super hot uh the track's usually in terrible condition and you notice throughout qualifying the track ramped up by about a second so imagine a track earlier in the day the heat 40 50 sometimes approaching 55 60 degrees track temperature celsius american friends i don't know how hot that is in fahrenheit i've I've wiped that scale from my memory because it's clearly inferior. Yes, that was part of your, um, what do you call it, normalization. Residency. Into, uh, residency, yeah. You had to have that wiped and uh, now you drink tea exclusively. I, I, dude, I, I ran out of coffee the other morning. I had a cup of Earl Grey with a slice of lemon, which is my absolute favorite. It didn't hit yeah. the spot, man. Nah. Nah. No, uh... Ah! Our, bo our boy Pirelli Condoms, what a username, it says um, that's about 140 Fahrenheit. So one of those numbers I said was f f fraud and height. <laughs> but, fraud and height. Uh, red, but so during practice, the Red Bull looked comfortable. Ferrari looked like they were a bit off, but they didn't seem too bothered yet. Um, what did you think about the, the Lance Stroll struggling with injury during practice sessions and his extraction? This is not to laugh at him being injured. That was super serious, but he was back. If you're not poor, you have access to science and medicine that us peasants could never touch. Very true, yeah. So what was it in the end? I think it was two broken wrists and a broken toe. I didn't realize he had a broken toe until he Me mentioned neither. it. Me neither. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like you say, a lot of people kicking off on Twitter and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, uh, I think basically there are a lot of doctors there that get paid a lot more than me and you and anyone on Twitter with degrees in medical science. So look, yep. if he, if he can pass an extraction test, which granted he failed the first one, but it's not super uncommon to fail your first one because sometimes was... you'll end up like kicking a fucking barge ball yeah, by accident. I'm pretty sure I've seen perfectly fit drivers fail an extraction test, which before the halo, it was only five seconds. So you're bolted into the car, seatbelts on, you have to take the steering wheel off, throw it out of the car. And in the case of a test, you'd hand it to the mechanic, belts off, out of the car, jump both feet firmly on the ground, five seconds. Now with the halo, that's seven seconds. But I've seen perfectly fit people that with no injuries fail their first egress test so you know yeah. a, a lot of a lot of our twitter experts were ripping into it and there was i mean there was people about to go to war over whether or not lance should yeah. drive and uh you fuckers need to go touch grass i swear <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i mean if, if i had to do an extraction test it'd probably take you about a half hour and they'd probably have to grease me up a little bit yeah but that's just what you like to do on a saturday night anyway yeah, just, that's roll, true. just yeah, get a little yeah. bit of butter on and uh yeah, yeah boy i think a little bit a little bit like i think um a little bit of this was oh it's lance stroll let's let's you know give him a little bit of a dig and a little bit of hate because i think lance does get a little bit of hate i mean he he just, showed just he showed the up facts. as the, the canadian cash boy but like genuinely yeah. we, we say this day in and day out you know sometimes in the recent history he seems to be lacking a little bit of spatial awareness but other than that the dude's been very reasonable, I think. Um, last year, he got a reputation of spectacular race starts and excellent racecraft in the wet, which is, you know, not something you typically equate with a, a turd. Pay driver. Ah. Yeah, exactly. I, I think he's solid. You know, he's. I think he's earned his spot. Does he... I don't think... Did he pay to get there? Yeah, his dad owns the team, but I don't think he deserves the title pay driver. Uh, yeah, I mean, is he going to win a world championship? Probably not, but he's not going to be like Latifi levels of comically bad at the back. Well, you say that. Is that team going to win a world championship? Hear me out. Hear uh -oh. me out. I, I think it's entirely possible because we don't know about these regulations. Um, the, the wind tunnel time, which basically the better you do in the championship, the less development you get. The cost cap. Let put it in perspective. Mercedes spent almost four hundred million dollars in twenty twenty. Now the cost cap is one hundred and forty ish. Uh, the teams at the back. They got a new. I've, I've done a video on this. It's I mean, don't Wednesday. ask. Don't ask what us what the budget cap is. We're ex Red Bull engineers. We don't know what the number is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it was catering, man. Five guys goes hard. Pay to win. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, those sandwiches were fucking great. Yeah, it is awesome. I could be wrong on that figure, but I think I think the cost cap is somewhere around there. It depends on what currency you're using. Uh, we don't use euros here. We use dollars, kilometers, and Celsius. Deal? 
everybody? You guys understood? Comprende? But um, yeah. The cost, the cost cap is in dollars, though, isn't it? It is. Because it's yeah, a lot of figures in F1 they do in dollars. Freedom currency. Considering, like, what, 8 out of 10 teams are based in the UK or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Ah, let's, just, let's just convert it to dollars and be subject that to... That was the and... thing, wasn't it? Uh, Christian, I think, was whinging um, in the media, I think, was it in 21 or whenever, saying, oh, we need more budget cap because the exchange rate's gone to shit. Ooh, interesting. So, yeah. But anyway, sorry, Rip. I went off on a tangent. Rip. What do we? What, sh- is that everything for the build-up for the weekend before we get to qualifying? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I think the main story was like you say it was uh, Stroll, who we professionally put down as having wankers whiplash. Yeah. Comes to find out, he broke a toe doing that as well. So I, I feel mm. like that was actually a bicycle accident, not a uh, a Channel nine hundred and eighty seven incident at the uh yeah, hotel well, you know maybe maybe when he you know he kicked the table as he jumped up quickly or something stubbed his toe mom not when i'm cleaning my room oh yo, 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 yo. <laughs> oh my god anyway uh qualifying talk to me goose did you watch qualifying you did watch qualifying didn't you yes i did oh yeah what are we saying how are we feeling about qualifying this week uh it was distinctly what i thought it would be Mm. In the Red Bull and Ferrari were sort of tussling. Um, I expected a little bit of drop off from Aston mm. because I think Aston were showing a lot of their hand early. And when you get into qualifying, Red Bull and Ferrari always show a bit more. Yeah. Um, very surprised at uh, Charles deciding to skip his second run in Q3 to save a set of tires. Yeah, a little set of extra set of bags of, for the race. Yeah, but now on retrospect, it kind of makes sense. And we'll get into all this a bit later. But mm. with his ERS change, then perhaps maybe there was a reason why they thought, nah, look, we're not going to improve. Just save a set of tires. Now, I missed this. Was the Urs, was the energy store changed before or after Quali? After. It was after Quali. Okay, so they mm. did they, so they maybe didn't know that. But, but like, so I think the thing that we're hitting, hinting on here is the qualifying order was Red Bulls. Ferraris, Alonzos, and Mercedes, and then Lance behind them. But, you know, they saved the Ferrari. Uh, uh, I don't, Signs didn't save a set because he had to do an extra run um, to get through, as far as I recall. But Leclerc saved a set of new softs for the race, and that kind of hints on what we've been seeing through winter testing. I don't think Ferrari are confident in their race pace and their tire degradation. They're like, you know what? Um, a qualifying run on a set of tires is effectively three laps. Realistically, it's effectively two laps in terms of full speed laps. But you know what? Those two laps could make a huge difference on a set of tires and just have that edge to be able to push out of the box. So they save that for the race. Um, yes, but again, but, I'm going to jump around a bit here. That's fine. Let's, let's, let's do that it. That advantage was literally in. pretty much... <laughs> yeah, he didn't need a uh, pit wall to see that. Nope. Um was only literally like a one lap advantage because when the uh red flag came out in was it in q2 no it was q- early q1 for the debris okay uh red bull only did an out and straight back in lap on a set of softs yeah yeah exactly and they did put new so, bags on for the next one all they pretty much did was just take the shine off of the tire exactly and aston martin do that already anyway they didn't this did not this time did they not no oh they didn't no. do that i missed that because i usually aston martin typically just do an outlap on all their sets of tires so when they go into the race you always see them with only used tires but that is absolutely correct in terms of aston had two new hards and one new medium each and three used softs going into qualifying so uh not this time an aston no. martin hell yeah given up given up on their tire scrubbing and Ooh. uh obviously paid off but more on that in a yeah. minute so sorry, qualifying. We we jump in. We we, we keep wanting to we keep wanting to talk about the race because that's where all the meat was. We just we're mm. on the potatoes right now, and uh yeah, and Enjoy maybe the a couple potatoes, a couple carrots. But um, I like ta- carbs. Let's 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 jump back around a little bit. Um, let's talk about the newbies. Yeah, um, let's start with debris. What what uh, happened in his qualifying run? Because you don't finish dead last on purpose. No, he got track limits, didn't he? Got time to lead. Ah. Son of a gun, yeah. You got, you can't do that. That that's gonna screw you. What was he? What was he set up for before the the truck limits? 
Was he in the mix or nah? I don't fucking know. You're the one with all the data. Well, I'm, I'm, I missed it. I, I didn't look too hard at qualifying because it was just like, I was just so excited about it. I was like, is Alonso going to do it, governor? <laughs> oh, yeah, blimey. Yeah, that's true. But, um, oh, blimey. So, DeVries, track limits, blah. Uh, Piastri, not a great qualifying session either. P19. Um, but I, I got to give some props to my brother from Florida, Logan Sargent. He got knocked mm. out in Q1, brother, but that some bitch was fast. And he was yep. actually just as fast as that Lundo Norris guy. Unfortunately, Lando set his lap time first, um, and he got through. So, correct. It's not not the headline you expect to see when you see a uh, Florida man goes crazy in the Middle East. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just just a cheeky uh, Q1 knockout, but just just. So, mm. you know what? That pretty pretty good for that. And the Williams. So far, we'll look at the race in a little bit. I don't have too many notes on them for the race, but uh, not bad. Not yet. Yeah, not I, bad I had them. I, I, I boldly predicted they would not finish this season in bottom place, and uh, or did I? I think it, I think it could be slightly paying off. Yeah, no, I think early, so. early days yet, but it definitely looks like they made a step forward. Yeah, and Albon solid. I I cannot say enough good things about Albon, but uh, um, wipe my, my wipe my chin off there and uh, move on. Um. What else? <laughs> Let's talk about our qualifying predictions. Should we go back to them? I've got them here. Have you got them yet? Yeah, because yeah, I, I can't even remember what so, I fucking predicted. Our top five in quality you predicted Verstappen, Perez, mm-hmm. Alonso, Leclerc, Hamilton in order. So okay. you've got I already got two correct. correct. You got two correct and Hamilton not in the top five. Uh I predicted Verstappen, Leclerc. Perez signs Russell. So in order, I only got Verstappen and signs in the correct positions, but I did get the top five. So we're splitting hairs there, but we're both close. We're both in the mix. We both had a good feel for what was going on. Yeah, maybe we put too much faith in Mercedes. We did. Wait, where did... Uh, is Russell right? Anyway, fuck it. Yeah, we, we, I think... Anyway, two, two each for qualifying... Meh. Alonso is P5. That is correct. So I got two right and the wrong top five. So we tied. We, we did an equally bad job. But good good on you for being so freaking biased, even though they're not even paying you anymore, you rat. Yep. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we'll get back to the, the podium predictions later because we both made some bold predictions there. Um, Alpine qualifying. Meh. Are the sand are the sandbags permanently glued on? They they actually went for cement bags, um, is what they decided oh, okay. to use. So, I mean, I've been ripping Alpine a bit through testing because they people are like, oh, they're just doing extreme setup tests. I'm like, okay, cool. They wasted yeah, three days. That person was me. Yeah, that was not this one. It was everybody. Fucking dork. It was everybody else. But uh, Ocon, Ocon qualified ninth. Gas man didn't get through. Uh, he qualified P twenty. Ouch. Yeah, Gazi had a time deleted. Yeah. Um, uh, but if you looked at the time that was deleted, it still wouldn't have been good enough. Yeah, so Gasly doesn't make it out of Q1, but Arcon does it all the way through, but the, they swap places later in the race, which is... Uh, Gaz- Gasly, yeah, Arcon did a good qualifying. Gasly had a great race. We'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, they're not as bad as they looked, but there's there's nobody that's going to convince me that the way that they approach winter testing means that they knew what they were doing with the car. Um, I just can't. I, I've talked to other people that work in race engineering, and I'm like, hey, be honest with me. What do you think about that? And they're like, what the hell were they doing? I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Just checking. That it's not me just being this super cynical person. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll get back to the race in a minute. Speaking of, is it race time? Uh, I think so. Let's just see. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg shit house his way into P10 in qualifying. Yeah, go on, go on, Hulk. You kind of. I spent a whole winter off season slandering Haas for making the wrong decision in choosing Hulkenberg, and in the first qualifying of the year, he he, you know, he's. I can see him serving up that humble pie. Yeah, but I'm not ready to. I'm not ready to eat it yet. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, wait. Did you see three, three races? Is what okay. I've done. Okay. Did you see Tomo's uh, Nico Hulkenberg apology form that he shared on yes. Twitter? Yeah, yeah. 
I'm not, I'm not ready to fill that out. So you're not going to fill it out and drive to Switzerland to give it to him. Or is, uh, I reckon he. I reckon he lives in Switzerland, doesn't he? Does he? I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. I haven't talked to him in a while. But anyway, create your Nico. But uh, I'll tell you where he lives in Kevin Magnuson's pocket. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's move on to our race shall we sure why not okay i've got a question for everybody and uh this is hidden from you as well who had the biggest it? gains on lap one of the race biggest gains uh, lap one of the race uh i think i know this because it's part of my homework ah okay good for I you think I think it might have been Valtteri Bottas. It was indeed the Valtteri Bottas. He went from P12 to P8 on the race start. Now, other impressive race starts. Um, what else you got? Anybody else that's a note honorable mention for uh, that? Uh, good race starts. Who had a good race start? I, all I know is I know the people that had a bad one. Yeah, we'll get and, back to that one. We'll get yes, back to that one. So I don't know. Who else had a good Both of the Williams were up three on the race start, I do believe. So um, good starts from the Willies. So who were the I losers? Suppose, I suppose Gasly must have had a good start, right? Gasly, Gasly must have been up there on lap one. Uh, let me check the data. But anyway, we'll move on. Who had a uh, crappy, crappy race start? Uh, so I know two. I know... Uh, Checo kind of stuffed up his start. He was a bit slow coming out of the box. Yeah, bummer. And uh, our boy uh, Guan Yu Zhou decided to light him up. Yeah, and um, maybe maybe not to go on your apology form. Hulkenberg uh, and Joe down four on the race start, according to my data. Oof, extra oof. Mm. Uh, Gasly apparently had a really good lap one, but my oh because he started dead last, didn't make it up, or was it on the second lap? But uh. Apparently, Gasly had a, a, a rocket ship start as well. But um, anyway, starts, anyway. winners, losers. Uh, Lance only, Lance lost a position on the race start. Usually, Lance starts extremely well, but uh, not today. Maybe it was the, the toe, and he couldn't feel the throttle pedal, and the broken mm. wrist, he couldn't feel the clutch. But uh, Yeah, and the added, extra added weight of having some pins as well in his wrist, apparently. He's got some... yeah. I mean, that's what Alex, Alex Albon's still um, no appendix weight savings merchant, isn't he? True, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, lap one also saw the Dark Lord drop from fifth to seventh. Uh, rumor has it that the Virgin Sacrifices were not allowed in Bahrain, um, so he didn't get the extra blessing enchantment on his race start. But uh, <laughs> hey. I, I thought he just let off um, the accelerator sort of down the back straight just to let the Mercedes pass so he could sort of shit house his way past him again later. Sort well, of like uh, false hopes. Yeah, thing, exactly. You know? it's like, yeah, go on, go on. It's a beautiful car to drive. Yeah, it's Get like, some. yes, we're your customer team. We don't want to, you know, we don't want you to yank the engines away from us. Yeah, but you know what? Lance was so concerned about Alonso's not so great lap one that he almost checked in on him on a turn four on the first lap there that was mm. imagine dude just like just the time machine right and then a butterfly farts in the wrong direction and lance does actually fully t-bone the dark lord i reckon you would see alonzo stroll fist fight in the paddock and he'd break his ankles too uh, I think we'd have woken up this morning on bbc news to find that the spanish government had declared war against canada <laughs> I think it would have happened. <gasps> oh, what else we got? That, that I mean, that was a pretty interesting lap one. I was excited. I didn't know what to expect. And at the when you're at the track, race starts are pretty intimidating and exciting. Even if you can't fucking do anything, man, you're sat there. But now that I'm fully detached from the circus, I get that same level of hype at the race start. What was the mood like with the last lap, guys? Was it nuts? Uh, yeah, it was. It was. I think. You know, obviously, my disgusting Red Bull bias. I was probably the happiest one there. Mm. Um, although Hayden was pretty pleased, he's been a Aston Martin and Stroll fan for a while. Has he? What, yeah. what top was he wearing? He's, he had a Stroll, he's Stroll top on. Bless go him. on, lad, go on, lad. Oh, um, but yeah, I think did we not also have in the start Hulkenberg and Ocon have a little, mm. little knot to come together in yeah. one of the corners? Yeah, it, it did happen, and uh. That kicked off a bit of a chain reaction for Alcon. Hulkenberg did lose uh, an in plate and had to stop for a front wing, which 
kind of yep. screwed up his race. Hulkenberg ending up Haas down five and, from where he plates. started. Yeah. A Haas end plates on lap one saga continues into the new season. Yeah, Hulkenberg um Hulkenberg carried the Danish meatball flag for the first race. <laughs> Poor bloke. Uh, yeah. Dude, what happened to Ocon? How comical was that? Like, what? Uh, he was speed. I think he was trying to speed run, getting a black flag. So, what did he do? He started. He got a five second penalty because he was out of position at the grid start. Yeah. And I think it was like ever so slightly over the the yellow line. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't hideous. No, it's all computerized now, isn't it? And yeah. if you set the sensor off, then bang to rights. Um, and then when he came into the pits to serve that five-second penalty, um, I'm not 100% sure what happened. I think maybe one of the Alpine guys accidentally touched a tire or something. Um, so then he got an additional 10-second penalty after that so they, for failing they, to serve it correctly. So they served, like, most of a five-second penalty. And then don't do that, so they get another 10-second penalty on top of that. Yeah, uh, but then it continues, because when he came in to serve the new 10-second penalty, uh, he decided just for shits and gigs that he would speed down the pit lane. Bop, bop, um, bop, 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 bop. Yeah, so there you go. You ended up with uh, another 5-second penalty, I think, on top of that. And then I, wasn't there another speeding one? But basically, trying to get disqualified, thrown out of the race, throw the book at him. Any percent? Yeah, I mean, I have to dedicate like a shout out to Alpine. This is some serious sandbagging they're doing. It's really impressive. <gasps> oh, but like at, at the same time, I don't, I couldn't tell if his pit lane overspeeds because there's there's a common mechanism by which you can pit lane overspeed. So, um, you can overspeed on the way in by outbreaking yourself for the control line, or you can disengage the pit lane speed limiter too early. But there's another way which is a cock up from your engineers, which they would have caught earlier in the week. And I don't think it's this, but we've seen it before is you can set your pit lane speed limiter control too aggressive. And uh, the drivers, he, the drivers flat out on the throttle in the pit lane. They just hit the limiter. As soon as the car speed goes under the speed limit, the limiter catches the car and it holds that speed. So if the control systems engineers are feeling a little bit cheeky because you, you can dial in 0.0, .0 one or 0.1 kilometers an hour you can dial that in and if you get close to the edge without getting popped you can save a little bit of time it's minuscule but formula one's about minuscule stuff i don't think it was that it looks like he just oversped his did you hear his radio comment he's like man how is this happening i drive years without oh this. yeah 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 he was he was down horrendously bad and, uh, and uh yeah Maybe the FIA heard that and said, you've been doing this for years. Okay, we're going to give you all the penalties for all your previous seasons in this one race. Yeah. But uh, his teammate, however, Gasly, crap qualifying, recovers up to P9. And honestly, looking at his race pace at the end of the race, it was not dissimilar to the Dark Lord. So. No. And is this now when the sandbags finally may be coming off the Alpine on yeah. Gasly's car? And it, and it sounds like their, start, their winter testing... They had some issues changing from the push rod to pull rod or whatever they changed. Uh, apparently setup changes took longer, so they couldn't get through as much of their program, blah, blah, blah. But maybe the car is not too decent. They had a, a scrappy qualifying session, um, and, and that happens. And it's that's about the driver and the engineer getting the tires in the window, hitting the marks, um, not getting your track, delimit, uh, track limits, deleted lap times, and um, brakes some teams have issues with getting the brakes in the window you heard so many people moaning about brakes and they're pulling and this and that and qualifying last year let's see i hope for the best for them because they should be challenging for p4 based on last season yeah yep especially now uh, mclaren have spectacularly dropped the ball yeah can we do this like this doesn't count but can we do this entire uh race review without even mentioning red bull i think it's possible um, I mean, what Max pulled like a two second gap by what lap, like halfway around lap two or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And that was it. That's all you saw of him. So, GG's. Leclerc didn't stand a chance. Max, um, Max, both of the Red Bulls doing soft, soft, hard. Correct. Soft, soft, hard. Where Ferrari, what were they doing? Uh, soft, hard, hard. Win. Yeah. And they were like, we can't do it. So Red Bull able to back the pace off, manage their softs. 
Um, Max did pull a reasonable gap to Checo, and both of them just kind of held their gap to the end. It looks like Max finishing uh, 12, 14 seconds ahead of Checo. But Leclerc didn't have an answer for either of them, man. And no. What and Ferrari... I know we said, I know we literally just said we're not, we're going to do this without mentioning them, but I can't not mention the fact that GP was on the radio telling Max to put on another 0.7 of a second to his lap time because he was going too fast. Yeah. I mean, they, like, they were, and they were on hards that final set. They boxed around lap 35 to hards finally. And they basically did a stint at the end of the race, which was the same that they had done on the middle stint on the softs. And he's like, you can just go slower, mate. You can go slow. You can go slower. You yeah. can go slower. Unbelievable. Yeah, Scenes. I'm done asking. Go slower. I on And, and he, you heard Max talking. He's like, is Checo matching? He's like, yeah, don't worry. We're, there's not a race on. We're just locking this in. One, two, done. A lot of people said, can Checo pit and get an extra point for fastest lap? To which I replied... That's a very Ferrari thing to do, is to potentially bottle a 1-2 to score an additional point. But Yeah. Look, How big was the gap? Was it like, would it have been tight or would it have been safe? Um, it was, after Leclerc, it was, it was safe. It was 40 down to, it was over 30 seconds. 25, okay. It was 25 seconds for most of that stint, I believe, to uh, the Dark Lord, so easy. He could have done it fine, but it's one of those things. Like imagine you have a, a, a bum stop, and then all of a sudden you've got Alonso taking second step of the podium. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the first race of the year. Uh, you've absolutely decimated, you know, your nearest rivals. Are you going to risk, like you say, all that just for a single point in the first race of the season? That's, that's No, not that's really. That's stupidity. That's actual. I mean, you, you, you can turn it around, but like the, the, the risk reward there. It. Look at look at the pace they've got. Look at where Ferrari's sitting, and look at where their nearest competitor behind that is. It's not the one. But speaking of their nearest competitor, talk to me. Ferrari. No Aston. No, yeah Ferrari. Maybe. Oh yeah, I don't no, know. Good I don't point. know. I, don't I mean, know. yeah, no Aston. Yeah, no, I don't you're know. right. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, no, it would be Aston. Um, uh, let's talk about Ferrari then. Let's go for Ferrari because F for Ferrari. Yeah. Um, Ferrari have started the season pretty much uh, how they ended last year. Um, and that's, you know, a bit comical. Um, ah, so what do we have? We had uh, Charles had to replace um, his uh, energy store on the Saturday night after qualifying. Um, he, did, he had a good start. He managed to get past Checo on, you know, make the most of them new softs that he saved from qualifying. Uh, but then Ferrari decided that, or well, Ferrari, the Ferrari car remembered it was a Ferrari car and decided mm. to just give up the ghost. Mm. So, uh, but I will give some some hope to the uh, the fans, the Tifosi out there, that it just looked like the car shut down, which it could have just been a sensor thing. It you know there was no smoke, no fluid. It you know it's possible that that is salvageable, but. It sounds like it. The the media suggested it could be the ES, the energy store, which is yeah, the big the battery part they replaced. Which is the part they replaced. And it's funny you say that because um, the regulations, I do believe, allow for two energy stores to be used this season. They yep. removed and one Saturday. Yep. Yeah, because they weren't happy with something they saw on it. Yep. And they and that could have been like a you know they do a, a cycle test and they're like oh there's a cell that has an issue or there's a hot spot as a precaution we can change this we've only used one out of two now they've put the second one in the car uh, and they've so they, they've once they've been raced they're introduced and they're in the pool so if they have to use a new one he will take whatever penalty there is for the third es assuming both of them are scuffed if he can use the first one fine if the second one's fine he's got he's used both of them in the pool. But that doesn't yep. bode well if you've had two out of two in a single weekend on one car. And that, that's just a time bomb for signs, potentially. Yeah. I didn't see like any issues. I can't remember any issues with them in like testing or anything like mm. that. So it's a bit odd why all of a sudden two have decided to go so quickly. Uh, maybe they got a bit of sand in there. I don't know. Yeah. Chat is now suggesting that it's a new ES is a 10 place. So um, can they recover from that during a race? Yeah, but their pace and degradation was kind of not great at all. It was really not great. And we'll, we'll get on yeah, to what happened with this, Aston, but... That is, 
one of our concerns that you know we had was have Ferrari solved their degradation issues and looking like how Carlos struggled on those hard tires at that point when people were just pretty much driving past him. You just think mm, not quite there yet. Well, let's. I'm I'm looking at the Verstappen versus Ferraris in the data, right? And let's put this in perspective. First stint on the softs. Max is kind of just cruising, gets into a little bit of degradation. Leclerc gets into quite serious degradation, and uh, Max is averaging somewhere about three quarters of a second lap faster throughout that first stint. They put on the hards. They have relatively low deg, but the Red Bulls go faster with less deg and go longer on a soft tire. Sweet baby Jesus. Final stint. Um, signs, you know... That stint is probably on average half a second off, maybe a quarter second off on hards. And Sainz is trying to not lose positions. Verstappen is saving something to the tune of over a second a lap of lap time from what he could comfortably do. This does not look good for Ferrari. Red Bull have built a dominator. I hate to say it. Yep. It's very ominous. Yeah. It's... Uh, where is it? I found, I thought, picked this stat out earlier. Where was it? About Red Bull. Uh, yes, their first victory uh, at Bahrain since 2013. And it's the first time they got a 1-2 in qualifying and a race since Abu Dhabi 2013. So It's, it's been a minute, man. It's yeah. been a minute. But, yeah. What else What else we got on the... Uh on the race do, do we want to swap over and tell everybody about our friends real quick and then come back and finish the race it's about the middle uh yeah sure why not why don't we do that now why don't we okay. run it i'll get right onto that hello me again just interrupt your podcast episode listen we've been banging on about nord vpn for a while on the show and it's finally happened they've reached out to us and are offering an exclusive deal to our listeners you are fed up with not being able to access F1 TV Pro due to geographical restrictions, then this is what you need. With NordVPN, you can switch your virtual location to a country that enables the full feature set of F1 TV Pro. Tell me and Blake do it, and we've been happy customers of NordVPN for years. But Dan, I've heard VPNs are great for online protection, but they slow down your internet speed. Come on now, it's 2023. Three. I can stream a multitude of F1 TV HD feeds while hosting a watch along on Twitch with no issues. Furthermore, NordVPN prevents my internet service provider from bandwidth throttling so I can actually use my internet connection at the speeds I pay for. They have an app for smartphones that's easy to install and use, plus it's only the price of a cup of coffee every month. So to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan and four months for free, visit nordvpn.com slash engine. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So give it a try and if you like it great if you don't you can call us frauds on twitter simple now back to the episode i've got I a... don't know why are they telling me to fix it did you not hear the perfect edit of 2023 we'll, 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 we'll sort it out but anyway did this weekend i it's the first race of the year i watched um i flew home to america and i transplanted my office perfectly back at home um and i watched f1 tv pro with multi-viewer and it was absolutely freaking fantastic i had probably i think i've got like eight car cameras up i've got the, the the track map the race control messages i can hear the driver radios and i can go oh I, alonzo had a message five seconds ago or 10 laps ago i can go listen to that now it's a game changer and this is not a sponsored ad for multi-viewer multi-viewer is something i use and i fucking love it um but nordvpn also helps some people that can't use that use it so uh work work smarter not harder all right um and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great thing because if, if just a, a quick shout out for my stream. So on Saturdays and Sundays, I do qualifying and race watch alongs. I'll go live an hour before the race, um, but during the race, we'll watch it. And if you're using MultiViewer and F1 TV Pro, you can sync so that your stream is perfectly in tune with mine. It's it's phenomenal. No delays, no issues. Um, it's great. But speaking of the race, let's get back to the, the rest of the talking points before we get into our regular segments about what happened in the 2023 Bahrain Grand Prix? We uh, should, we, should we talk about how McLaren have successfully built a slow and unreliable car? Somebody asked, was it their side pod, like, panels? 
you know, the, the little what, display. The Amazon Kindles. Yeah, the Amazon Kindles on the top of their side pods, their dynamic display uh, advertising yeah. boards. Could that have messed up Piastri's steering wheel? Categorically, no. the answer is nine. That's no, German but, for no. Uh, Zach has come out um, in the media and said that uh, they are going to bring an upgrade package to those Amazon Kindles. Mm. And what they're going to do is they're going to display Adrian Newey's book, How to Build a Race Car. Oh my God. So the chief designers, when the mechanics work on the car, they're going to sit out in the garage and read that on the Kindle. And just yeah. like, hey, can oh, we need to change the bodywork? It's like, no, fuck off, mate. I'm on chapter 10. How not to build a slow as fuck car. Yep. Got it. Okay. Understood. I've got a signed copy of that book, actually. I haven't read it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Besties with Adrian. Just All right, mate. You know, drop that in there. It's nice. <laughs> uh, that's nice. That's some summer reading. And now that I've got away far enough away from Formula One, I, uh, I'm looking forward to reading that, honestly. But, uh, dude, that... Was... You know what? I've not read it yet, either, to be honest. So mm. I, It's one what of those f- things. It's one of those know, things. Eh? What do we know? I don't know anything. And I, I, I'm honest with you guys all the time. But... McLaren. Let's yeah, talk let's about McLaren. To the, let's talk about the McLaren. McLaren. Back to the McLaren. Well, well, Piastri DNF, you know, and they box in to change his steering wheel, no issues. He thought his gearbox was screwed. I mean, that's not a great first run for the rookie Piastri. No, it's not. And the, you know, by changing the steering wheel, they were effectively basically trying to turn the car off and on again hmm. to see if that resolved the issue. Uh, it did not, I'm afraid. Um, and then just for pure banter, um, Lando's car decided to spring an air leak. Um, <laughs> oh. And then that effectively turned Lando's race into an extended test session, really, because he ended up to pit, I think it was six times and finished oh. last. Let's look at this. I've got the pit stop chart here. Uh, Norris, one, two, three, four, five, six. Se- he did seven cents, six stops. Yeah. Yeah. So, and some people I've seen ask, like, why on earth would you need to top a car up with air? And I believe it's got something to do with the way the injectors work on the engine. It's the valves. Yes. It's yeah, the... the valves. They can't do it like our cars do it because they need to do it a lot quicker. So they have to use compressed air or something to make the valves work. Something like that. Look. Exactly. And that system sprung a leak. So you can't really just fix that. Um, so... You saw when every time Lando would come into the stop, there'd be a guy on the left side of the car in the pit stop who would reach over into the cockpit, or it was on the side of the cockpit for them, actually. It's in the top of the side pod. And he'd plug in an air cylinder that would recharge that, and they would go again. And they were doing pit stop testing, which is good. They got really good at filling up the uh, pneumatics, which was great for them. But um, unfortunately, he did, like, I don't know, he did a seven-lap stint on hards at, at one point. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, oh my you're God! Not the only person to go on mediums as well at one point. In the that race. is that is the only body that ran the butter compound, the yellow. I can just only assume that's because that was literally like the only tire set they had left. Fit tires, yeah, fit tires, fit tires, fit tires. So, uh, dude, speaking of, let's let's, let's talk about two things. You're McLaren yeah. right now. What That's do you chat. do first? But uh, like, but I'm but Zach Brown. I don't think it's Zach. I, it can't be Zach. They, they were worse before. They're not that... Like, Zach is the commercial guy, the CEO. He's not the person making technical decisions. Whoever's making technical decisions on that, somebody's dropping the ball massively. There's tools wrong. There's philosophy wrong. There's something so abysmally bad, it makes me depressed. Yeah. Uh, for I think I said this on the last lap i said that for a, a company that has such a large pool of resources staff facilities it's not acceptable to continuously build howlers like this back mm. in the honda days you could turn around and say well this was the honda pu shit but there's no hiding from it now but it's rumored that they sabotaged the honda to make it look even worse than it was but it was a piece of crap when they started but now it's the best engine on the grid imagine and rumor has it they're talking to them again. Yeah, but are they talking to them or are they talking to Red Bull powertrains? I don't know, because Honda is also entered, in, aren't they? I think it was officially confirmed that they've been talking to Red Bull powertrains. Ah. Uh, 
But you know, people talk all the time. Mm, I mean, just a, just friends. Yeah, like I think even Sebastian Vettel at one point was talking about talking to Red Bull after he left Ferrari. But that's just because everyone talks. You know, I talk. I talk to people. Yeah, I think it was a different conversation than what you usually have with people. But yeah. maybe, yeah, exactly. But dude, if you're if you're Daniel Ricardo right now, how smug are you? You got paid to get out of a terrible shit car to avoid to drive a terrible shit car for another year. Yeah. Daniel's lows. Daniel got paid. is laughing right now. And I'm happy yeah. for him. But eighteen million to to sit back and relax. I feel really bad for Lando and Piastri because I feel like Lando's one of the guys that really I think could be up there with Max Leclerc in terms of the new guys coming through. Not not even to mention uh Alonzo Hamilton. Mm. But he sat here in this shed and he's got his hands tied. And Piastri, another one of those, you know, George Russell types, ace the junior category, show up. And what do you got? I mean, George. A whole lot of nothing. George did his dues in the Willies. He got rocked up to uh, drive the Mercedes, did a spectacular job, got the seat, fine. And Lando's sitting there. He's, he's dying inside, man, for sure. Do you reckon he's gone at the end of the season? I hope, for, I hope for his own personal sake he is. And there's people even mentioning, you know, potentially what about Alpha soon, Audi, Seidel's there. Yeah. Who knows? I, and this isn't a dig at the people that work there. Cause no, I know there's, there's, there's people that work at McLaren that follow me on Twitter and I, yeah, I can only imagine how hard it is in a minute for it them. It sucks, but, man. Yeah. But like, it's, if if it was like let's say Ferrari, at least the car looks quick with the Ferrari. You know, right? You can and some work on the there. yeah, and you well okay, and you can work on the reliability. But with the McLaren, it doesn't even look fast, and it's unreliable. Yeah, like yeah, it, and that's something to be very clear. It's like I I spent a couple years at Force India. Car was not fast. You know, we had some terrible races. We just we rewatched we rewatched Malaysia. 13 double dnf it's not like the engineers are going back saying you idiot designers you screwed it up we're like how do we fix this and at the same time it's like there's people that i know that work at mclaren and it sucks to see them doing well but you know there's ultimately there's a problem pretty far up the food chain probably quite far removed from my friends that are making terrible decisions for a number of years and uh it doesn't seem speaking, like it's getting better speaking of people higher up the food chain uh after the race, Andrea Stella said that both cars were quick enough for points without issues. That feels like a bit of a fucking reach to me. Is there anything you've seen in the data that might suggest they may have scored any points in their McLarens? Um, it's hard to tell from Lando's pace. Um, Lando was matching the rest of the midfield, you know, the back midfield. His pace was not there. Maybe on the final stint, great, but it's, it's so unrepresentative. Piastri... Uh, once everybody pit from around him, he was going okay. Maybe they could have got points. Um, but I, I think from the data we have, only somebody in the team would have been able to see that. So, yeah, plausible. Um, uh, but the, the Alpine still looks better than the McLaren to me. Yeah, I would be inclined to agree with that. Yeah. But uh, um, who else have we got? Williams? Cheeky little point on the first race of the season. Go on, Alex. And a uh, yeah. Florida man, P12. Dude, I don't... verdict. My verdict's out on Sargent, but I think he could be really solid. Alex is no slouch. And, uh, you know, I don't expect Lo Logan to set the world on fire for his first season. But if he's up there punching, hanging out with Alex, good for them. Good for them. And yeah, I, hope, I, I hope they... I think... uh, it was a real solid debut for, you know, Sargent. I don't really know what else. No cock-ups, right? I, we, we should have had him on one of our report cards, but we don't. We'll get to the report cards in a, a minute. <laughs> uh, Haas. Haas. Ha, Haas. Gene. Uh, they gambled. Jane. I'm going to call Jane. Um, <laughs> Look like a wankers. Hey, Gene, should we fit the hard tire? Yeah. So Magnussen was the only one that decided to start on the hard compound tire, which was an absolutely incredible decision because he ended up dropping to last place off the start line. God! 
they seem like they gamble a lot, you know, because they're like, we're not sure how we're going to go. Why don't we mix, you know, split strategies and mix it? It's like, it just goes to tell you they didn't have the, the confidence or the information. Like, ah, well, how, how bad could the hard be? It's like, it's pretty bad. Pretty fucking bad. Even at my, least to start on. Even my cat, Sterling here, says, no, those hards were absolute doo-doo, buddy. Yeah, we have another guest appearance there from the uh, F1 Engine Breaking Podcast cat. Yeah. If you would like to see the cat, you can find us on YouTube and Twitch. Um, but if not, you know, if you're audio only, then I'll just say it's a middle-aged man cuddling the cat right now. He's a uh, podcast. black and white tuxedo, short hair, white gloves, very elegant, very distinguished, a little sterling kitty cat. Yep, there we go. Um, so what was he saying? Haas, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 my brain's gone to mush. The power let's, of the let's cat. move on. I'm over it. Well, I no, 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 wait, 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 wait. So yeah, Magnuson hard tires, <laughs> wrong decision. Uh, Hulkenberg had a howler. He had a little tangle with Ocon, damaged his front wing, uh, pretty much cost him performance and lap time. Uh, and then just for the bants, he got a time penalty for exceeding track limits too too many times towards the end. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I'm over it. Let's make up some lap time. But realistically, like if you can get a couple of like cheeky track limits towards the end of the race. What was it Austin last year with Max and Lewis trading track limits? Just like, oh, he's he's track limits. Oh, he's track limits. Oh, he's track limits. Penalty. Yeah. You can you can throw a couple jokers in there, but uh, they weren't going anywhere. No. And Haas, you know, in the first race of the seasons, they have looked strong in the past, whereas uh, this time it looked, we've gone back to a very mediocre Haas. Yeah. It seems. Yeah. Not, not too thrilled about it. Um... Next. Gasly, we talked about Gasly's recovery. Blah. Yeah, he nailed it. P20 up to P9. Uh, used the undercut to, you know, an advantage. Um, and he was he was sort of coming up to Bottas for eighth, but just he, ran out of laps, really. Yeah, no, he, he really did close the gap. But uh, here's something that Rory says is uh, Gasly's still on penal 10 penalty points. So if he gets another one, is that a race ban? Oh my Believe goodness! So, yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, should we should we get on to the um the final the final part of the race, the Dark Lord? You you yeah. wrote some you wrote some kind words for him. This is this is poetic. You wanna? Oh what the the random stat? Yeah, let's go. Come on, read yeah, it out. So at forty one years and two hundred nineteen days old, only one older driver has been on the podium in the last thirty seven years. Can anybody in chat tell me? And for the sake of our audio listeners, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm just going to tell you. It was Michael Schumacher. He was 43 when he finished third in Valencia in 2012. That's pretty impressive. That was a cool track until they took the track down and then everybody has just like destroyed the track. As soon as they closed that, it was the old America's Cup facility, wasn't it? They ripped all the cabling out, the yes, copper. The yeah. place is completely scuffed. And actually... Our good buddy Matt Amos has done a video on that. You can go walk around that circuit. If you haven't followed Matt on YouTube, definitely uh, check his channel. He does so much cool stuff on his channel. Um, really, really excellent content creator. What I don't think he's going to walk around all of it anymore. So I think he said they've turned part of it into a housing development now. But... Oh, fine. Yeah, then when the lights turn off, they just rip all the copper out of that shit again, too. Yeah, yeah, probably. <sighs> I was never a fan of Valencia, to be honest. I only went there once, and then it was off the calendar the next oh, season. I never, I never so. went there. I just meant in terms of the track. I just, I don't know. It didn't vibe with me. I'm mm -hmm. not a huge fan of city tracks. Cries, yeah. cries in uh, Baku. Yeah. So, well so, done, Baku. I'd go to Baku if I could. Oh. So. Next. Race. Is, is that it for the race? I think so. I think that's everyone. Yeah, Red Bull dominated. Ferrari dropped the ball. Signs couldn't hang on. The Dark Lord comes through to finish on the podium. Um, if if Alon here's a, here's one for you. If Alonso hadn't dropped back behind the Mercs initially, um, mm -hmm. looking at their pace, Alonso got substantially held up by the Mercs in that first stint because he Alonso overcut Russell on the first yeah. stop and nearly overcut Lewis on the second stop. And it had me scratching my head. Were they sleeping with Lewis on his second stint? Because Lewis was like, why are you stopping me? I can keep going, which implies why are you stopping me? I could keep going or I could go faster or could have gone yeah. faster the whole time. I think Lewis was managing and uh, I think they were not. I think they dropped the ball on that call. 
a genuine it's easy to say in hindsight but looking at that you know you, yeah. you see alonzo closing and then lewis stops to to cover the overcut right or to cover the them undercutting him and then alonzo just stays out and almost overcuts him anyway yeah i mean mercedes have dropped the ball in a lot of aspects really um <clears throat> But it's weird because, like, the W14 doesn't look anywhere near as bad as what the 13 did at the start of last year. But the, I think the issue is is that Aston have basically leapfrogged them. It's, it's, it's still about the same off as it was at the start of last season. The gap is the same. So they, the, the gap from Bahrain a year to year is the exact same. And Aston are just mm. like, hey, we're really close. Aston were 2.5% off of pole on average last season. And what was they, it and they this were, time? Uh, 0 0.7 which is about where Mercedes have been sitting. So it's it sucks to see Mercedes down like that, but they've, you know, there's people getting paid a fuckload of money to make decisions on what to do, how to develop the car, where to put the money, where to put the resources, and they've they've made a miss, and they've paid the price for it for last year, um, and they hedged the bets gone into this year, and it's not paid off. Toto's yep. down. Toto's down. And in the cost cap era, you can't just spend your way out of it. It's no. kind of limited now. As no, to... their, their budget's like less than a half of what it was. So mm, did you, you see... fuck up one year and it's going to carry on for like, well, like we're seeing for the next year and, and whatnot. Yeah. But the thing was like, you see Toto, we're not going to give up. Lewis, super supportive and encouraging as he always is, which I do love about him. You know, he'll get down sometimes, but at the end of the day, he always comes back. And Russell straight up in the press was like, Red Bull are going to win every race this year. His comms person, whoever they were, I, I sent a prayer for them because they're like literally in the press box about to about to fall over on their sword when when George is like, blimey, they're going to win them all, mate. Yeah, George, George PR Russell strikes again. Oh, there you go. Another podcast with a uh, guest appearance from my dog's bark in the background. Oh, cuties. Why don't we talk about our race predictions? I wrote them down. Yeah? What did we get? So, you predicted Leclerc, Alonso, Hamilton. Yeah, because I said that the Red Bulls were going to have another double DNF because they're going to win the championship and it'll yeah. be a repeat of last year. So, they've, they've got the, the race one curse right now. It's, 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 we have to wait until next week to see if that's not the thing. Yep. I, uh, I pulled one out, man. My prediction, Verstappen, Perez, Alonso. I went back and listened to the podcast this morning from last week because yeah, I forgot to write to it down. Check. Just, just to double check. But uh, do you think... Nailed it. Nailed it. But yeah, back to back to this. Do you think Max could break the uh, wins in a season record? And... I don't know. It's... He looks... <sighs> that car looks so good. Looking at this race... The Ferraris were nowhere, man. I know, but it's it's the first race. Like, well, this is quite a rear limited circuit. And then we're going to Jeddah, which is you know front limited. Is that gonna? Well, yeah, we'll see. But like, I think the reg that the, the Red Bull should come even more alive there. But the Ferrari with a pointy car, maybe. But they're not going to be able to make their tires last. But let's see. Let's see. I'm I'm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not going to say that they're not, but you have to say this is a dominant start to the season. I mean, yeah, absolutely, 100%. This is, well, like I said earlier, it's, it's 2013 levels of Sebastian Vettel dominant, isn't mm. it? So we shall see. And, of course, it happens after me and you leave Red Bull. So fair enough. Awesome. We were the problem the whole fucking time. Yeah. Why don't we uh, Why don't we move on? We got a little bit. Well, let's, let's move on a bit. Why don't we go to our new segment? Uh, the random fandom. Yeah, go on. You got you got okay. something new, don't you? I do. Ready? Yeah. Random fandom. Wow. Um, tell you me. like that? Yeah, it was, that was beautiful. I'm not sure about the. Oh, blimey! But but it was nice before uh, you kind of singing. I'm not gonna lie. I pressed the wrong button. Were you supposed to auto tune it? I was supposed to, yeah, but we ended up going for the George Russell uh, radio message button instead. Right. Tell everybody about Random Fandom. Random Fandom. We have been accused, right, unfairly of uh, Red Bull bias. 
which, you know, I can't believe somebody would accuse two people that had their mortgages paid by Red Bull for seven years of being biased towards them. Um, but to prove that we can hate every team equally, we're going to select uh, a team each at random for the race and, and give it like a little report about them. And uh, this, this for the first race, I got Alfa Romeo. Uh, you got Ferrari. So, uh, yeah, would you like to hear my little... Uh... I'd, I'd love to hear your report card. Tell me how your boys joke on you and Valtteri Bottas did. And hey, the team. So in qualifying, right, in qualifying, Guan Yu Zhou was only 0 0.03 seconds behind his teammate Bottas. So Bottas was 12th. Uh, Zhou was 13th. Zhou's been a lot closer this time in qualifying to Bottas. Hopefully that's a good, good sign of things to come, yep. right? Uh, Bottas had a wicked start. I think we mentioned that earlier. Uh, sadly, Joe had a bit of a, a wheel spin at his start, and it was a bit of a mess, to be honest. Yeah, wah, 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 wah. yeah one of those. Yeah, that's the professional term. Uh, but he did, he was all right. He was running behind Bottas. You know, he wasn't doing too bad. He struggled a little bit for grip on the second set of tires, and that sort of dropped him out of contention a little bit. Um, but big brain time here from Alfa Romeo, who decided, actually, look, we're not going to get any better than 12th here. Let's pit him at the very end so we can steal the fastest lap away from Gasly in the Alpine, right? So he doesn't get a point for that because Joe finished 16th, but it denies Gasly the point because he finished in ninth. I think Gasly was, wasn't yeah. it? So, and look, Alpine are probably going to be one of their rivals this season, so... Fucking big brain from them. Mega. Hyped, hyped Mega. That. Yeah. That's uh, so petty. Bottas, That's petty though, isn't it? It's like, right, we can't get that bonus point, but we can take it away yep. from you. Let's stick you on another set of bags, get that smoky hot lap in, and Pierre Gasly did not like that. No. That could be, you know, could be, could be, um... Oh, my brain's broken. It could be the decider or whatever mm, later in the season. Be. Could be. Uh, but Bottas, you know, he had a stormer. A bit of a quiet stormer because it kind of went under the radar that um, he finished eighth. Alonso think... stole everybody's hype yeah, no matter what. Yeah. Alonso. There was so much, you know, going on everywhere else. I think Bottas managed to sneak an eighth place finish in there, uh, which is probably the best they were going to get this weekend out of it. So uh, Alfa Romeo, uh, I give you... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a star rating. I'll give them... A four four stars out of five. I think okay. they did well. I think they maximised the result out of one driver and used their out of position driver in an effective manner to steal a point from the competition. I like it. Oof. Alfa Romeo, GGs. Well done. I picked Ferrari for my um, random fandom, and I've got to say, I was feeling pretty good at the start. Uh, their practice and qualifying looked reasonable. Lately, qualifying, they're just kind of doing their program. Nothing bad. Deg looks okay. But, yeah, practice normal. Qualifying, I'll give them four out of five. I mean, Charles didn't think they, think they have a shot. Didn't seem to think they had a shot. Um, and he looked more surprised than anything that they were second row. Um, their race, I'm going to break it down a little bit. Their race pace and management of their tires, three out of five. Like, barely good enough for midfield. You know, it's just not, it's not up there. Um, Perez did have a terrible start. Leclerc took advantage of that, but Leclerc had zero shot of catching Max. And Ferrari's goal is not to be so good in completing laps. They need to be winning world championships. Otherwise, what are they doing? Um, Leclerc, so far, seems clear signs. Not really a surprise, but maybe not too far apart. But for the race, they get an F. They get zero out of five stars for me. Like, shambles. Um, DNF on Leclerc. And Sainz didn't have pace, and he got boxed up by an Aston Martin of some geezer, some absolute old dude. OAP. Yeah, seriously. So, um, Ferrari, you get nothing. You get nothing from me. Oh. Well, the random fandom's gone well. That is. You know, just turned it into slander. We'll, we'll pick new teams for next week, though, when we do our I mean, Jetta it's preview. Difficult. It's difficult to big up Ferrari after that uh, sort of. No. You know. To be fair, as a, maybe I'll give them one star because their car reveal was really cool. 
True. Unfortunately, this is not for testing. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, for the race. Uh -huh. So, why don't we? Uh, why don't we move on to uh, our next segment? Yeah, it's back. Fraud watch. Fraud watch. Oh my goodness. Let me. I'll. I'll tell you guys about toot toot. The fraud toot watch toot. is basically a system by which uh, we will take a team from any week and we will call them out we will put them on the fire and they're on fraud watch so we pick a team that's done something terrible it could be a team a driver it could be the fia it could be pirelli to be fair fia and the pirelli are usually in the fraud watch like quarantine zone so they they, they get yeah. special treatment otherwise it's just super easy they just say something uh mbs is also in that because like as soon as he opens his mouth it's like instantly in the bin something some he's done something controversial to piss somebody off but last week um Dan, you put Fraud Watch on to McLaren. I did, yeah. And, and I, in a shocking turn of events, I don't think anyone will be surprised to hear that I'm keeping them on Fraud Watch. Oh, two weeks in a row. What happens if somebody gets three weeks in a row on Fraud Watch? There's a special reward, like the Wall of Shame? Like a yeah, long a seasonal... Okay, cool. So Dan picked Fraud Watch for McLaren because they just had a shocking, shocking... And yeah, uh, I stay. basically I summed it up uh, like I did earlier, right? So it's good to have a fast car that's unreliable, right? Because you can work on that. Yep. Or you know a slow car that's reliable, you know you can work on that. Yep. But a slow car that's unreliable, you're fucked, mate. <laughs> you know, yeah. Thanks for playing. <laughs> slow but, car yeah. unreliable. Somebody suggested in the chat uh, that we give give them the golden toilet award. That is yeah, brilliant. I'm sure I can find a golden toilet seat on Amazon. Um, I'll post that to them. Oh my goodness! So, um, that's interesting. Uh, last week I picked Alpine. Now, uh, to clarify their situation, my stance on them, they are better than I expected, but they are still on probation because we need them to be fighting for fourth. They are not fighting for fourth. They're, I don't know, maybe they're maybe they're fifth, sixth right now in terms of outright pace if they both get their eye in but their qualifying result was terrible um but the car doesn't look as bad as it looked through testing so hopefully they learned a lot about their car and they can fix it and not screw up qualifying but this week dan you've put mclaren back on fraud watch yeah this is it two out of three um <laughs> yeah one more strike and they're out <laughs> Miss Hellcat suggests we could get a toilet seat shot glass on Amazon. Is it gold? That will do. That will do. Uh, oh, toilet seat and painted gold. Can you drive to? Do you want to drive to Woking and deliver the golden toilet seat to them if they if they hit it? Sure. Why not? Right. Only, we're, only if I can do like a shot of Jaeger out of it or something. Yeah, but I wait. Do you have the Fiat Panda yet? Uh, negative. I'm right. afraid not. Not yet. Has James May called you up on that one again. Uh, not for a while. Not for a while. I think it's it's due again. Okay. Okay, fair enough. But we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that one. Uh, maybe another day. So, this week, unsurprisingly, I am putting Ferrari on Fraud Watch. This is, this is your year. Every year is your year. And you're breaking all of your fans' hearts and dreams. They're depressed. I don't know how you got them to love you so much. Maybe it's because the Italian language and you guys are so charming. Um... But I really hope you guys turn it around. But they're on fraud watch this week. Sorry. Yep. No, don't apologize. Um, never apologize. Never apologize. Fraud alert. Break F1 analysis. Suspicious activity. <laughs> Why don't we move on to our next segment? You ready for it? Hit it. Oh, you think who's a good boy? I am. I'm a good boy. Oh, tell us about engine mode, good boy. Engine mode, good boy, was something that was dreamt up because... Uh, somebody called me Engine Mode Good Boy on Twitter because I was defending Red Bull, so we decided to run with it, and we've now turned it into basically our Good Thing of the Week award. Um, Love it. So f for testing, you put Bottas down. Yep. Uh, Just a lap. And I put yeah, and I put uh, Guan Yu Zhou down because he took the fastest lap on one of the days. So the lap, and and you've given us your report card on both of the lads, and yeah, I, I it's think an Alfa Romeo loving at the minute. I love it. I love it. Should we? We should see if we can get Valtteri Bottas or Jogan you on the show one day. Yeah, why not? I would love that. Like, it's, it's like one of those like long bombs and just like yeet. Yeah. But but I've, I've 
like we're those probably going to have to sit naked in a sauna if we interview Bottas though. That's the only problem. I'd do it. I went to Finland for a, mm. a team building with Red Bull when uh, when Kvyat joined the team, and yeah. uh, we did snowmobiling and saunas, and there was lots of nudity and beer and uh, outdoor yeah. activities in the snow. Not nude or with beer. We we did the beer and nudity, nudity at night. If they film us doing that for Drive to Survive, they're going to need a fucking wide-angle lens to fit my ass in it. <laughs> Who do you have for Engine Mode Good Boy Award this week? Uh, it can only be one winner of the Engine Mode Good Boy Award, and that <laughs> is the Dark Lord himself, Fernando Alonso. Give yourself a little... Go on, lad. I think he done a stellar job. I loved his racing against Lewis. Uh, the big brain switchbacks and things like that. It was just, it was a drive that reminded you just how good Alonso is. And mm. he's 41, man. Like, he's still got the moves, man. He has. If, you, if you're listening to this in your car on the way to work, give us a little toot toot for Fernando Alonso, the Dark Lord himself. And um, if you'd like to make a human sacrifice to his career, um, I'm sure there's a hotline you can call. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> I have put... Logan on my good boy list this week. Just reasonable start. Um, best newcomer performance of the weekend, I think, overall. Yeah, probably not hard considering, you know, everybody Biastri, else shit the bed. Yeah, Biastri uh, <laughs> shit the bed. And uh, uh, De Vries is in an Alpha Tauri, which is not the greatest car at the minute to show your ability. Oh, in. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so sad for Alpha Tauri because I want them um, to do well and they should do well, but. Fully on board with your suggestion of Sergeant, and if I hadn't picked Alonso, he would have been my second choice. Yeah. So that brings our usual program to a little bit of a wrap. But what can what can everybody, our listeners and viewers on YouTube, expect from us next week? Uh, we're going to do like a little Saudi preview. We will do our new predictions for the Saudi race. We're going to do our uh, random fandom spinning the wheel for mm. our uh, Saudi. And just basically more shithousery and fraudulent takes. I love it. I love it. Um, so if you guys are listening to us on Spotify or Apple Music or MySpace or any of those podcast platforms, do be sure to give us your honest rating. If it's five stars, great. Um, tell your nan about it. Tell your nan you love you love your Formula One podcast. And if you want to learn a little bit of shithousery, a bit of swearing, um, and a little bit of wheel knowledge. It's a great place. Don't hesitate to share it with your friends. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and also share it with your nan. The The video format is a lot better because Dan and his beard are so handsome. I can't grow a beard, so I'm no. unfortunately. So. And for people that are watching the video of this, I do apologize. My camera's white balance has been changing wildly throughout tonight. It's, so it's fine. One moment I look incredibly tanned and the next moment I look like Casper the Ghost. I don't think you're incredibly tanned, though. I don't no, not I'm saying the white balance is, is all over the place today. Um, uh, so yeah, big up your local butchers. Um, shout out to your nans. Uh, big up MySpace. Uh, I think that's about it, really. Now you can all fuck off. <laughs>